Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. Before I introduce you to our guest, this is a repeat offender <laughs> coming on. <laughs> I'm already having fun. <laughs> God almighty. Here's, here's the quote. Here's the quote for this episode. <laughs> nice. Excellence is an art won by trading and habituation. Aristotle. Our yeah. guest today is episode 119, season 10. It's a he's a good friend of mine, good friend of the show, should be a good friend of yours. Go listen to the episode. John Duffin, your message received is your podcast, right? John, I've been right. on it. What Absolutely a pleasure. Yep. Oh my god, Jay. It's great to be back here again. I love you. Hold on, there's more good other than I the want to say about you. Oh, do it. Oh. You're a great guy, good friend. John is a coach, a mentor, an advisor to people. Not only on their voice, because he actually does audiobooks too. I want to talk about that today. Mm -hmm. Master of ceremonies, ev ev general events, uh, group trainings, and so much more. And has uh, years of experience in business and in, with people. Mm -hmm. And listen to episode one nineteen, season ten. All right, now you now you can now you can talk. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying no, to do less, you know, So, as I said, it's, yeah. Hey, can we do that again? No, man, it's just great to be back. It, it, it's an absolute honor. I'm a massive fan of you, and you're somebody who has, for me, for years, done the work. So, just for that alone, Thanks. it's like I said again, I, I, you know, anything I can do to help you, I'm happy to be here. I want to know Thanks. what you are have learned about yourself as a business owner and as a master of your craft when it comes to. The content that I see mm. on Instagram and some of the other platforms of you mm. sharing insights and opinions, there's people that are listening to this that may have interest in following mm. that footsteps, sharing their their message, having their message received. So what's what have you learned from doing that? Mm -hmm. Great question. I think the first thing I've learned is that I don't have to overcompensate as much as I thought I used to. I used to feel like when I first started doing the video content, I had to literally fill space. And I, I know that at some of my earlier videos, I feel like were indefinitely long mm. and, 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 and went on forever. And I think a big part of it was I felt like I needed to let you know, let you know somehow that I actually knew what I was talking about. And I think it was that lack of confidence in the beginning that made them so long and rambly. And you get a little more experience, you get a little more confident, you realize you, you, somebody taught me this and I love this videographer that I work with and he helped me tremendously, which was mm. the mantra, one thought, one video, one thought, one video. And I tend to be more succinct and more on point. And I'd rather do that than to just fill up air, you know, if that, if that makes any sense. What has been the hardest, the hardest piece of putting yourself mm -hmm. in the spotlight? Well, I never was, it comes up a lot and I'm, and I'm glad you asked. I was never the confident type at all. I mean, I came to like, like as a kid, I was never very confident. I was the bookwormy type. I was the really quiet type. And so I was in a career for a lot of years in sales and broadcast sales and sales advertising where you were forced to become an extrovert. So I did, and, 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 and I was comfortable in the role. But when it's just you, that was something I had never really done before. Mm. You know, certainly not in public. And, and because I was always a guarded, much more guarded person, that it was kind of, it was very difficult for me to be able to feel comfortable allowing myself to be known. Wow. You know. Do you meet people that, that struggle with that in the yeah. work now? Yeah. One of the fun parts about what I get to do is I've come to realize that I'm not the only one. And that's, that's one of the more gratifying parts about why I, why I do coach and why I help people. And like my whole mantra is if I can help somebody get to the, where they want to get to a little bit faster, bang their head a little bit less than I have, and, and not 
feel like like feel things so deeply as I did that maybe you could get there more quickly, have a little more fun in the process. I love what I get to do now. I love the ease of it. I mean, I, I, I try not to have regrets, mm. but it took me a while to get there. Why? To feel comfortable speaking, to feel comfortable mm. being me, to feel comfortable not over criticizing myself, not thinking, oh, you won't like me, you'll run, you could be you, Jay Duran, could be anybody, you know, what we like, mm. and all of that self important judging really hindered my progress where I was much more of a people pleaser earlier. I now have a hell of a lot of fun, just feeling loose enough to be able to, <clears throat> to say what I want to say, you know, and not worry so much about how much you'll like it more so than how gratifying it is if I can help somebody out. It, it, it just seems to work a little, a lot easier. And it's a hell of a lot more enjoyable to me. Wow. Do you find that people that are in, they're doing second careers mm -hmm. struggle with identity? Oh yeah. 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 Especially if you're coming from like, for me, a corporate career. So coming, working in corporations where you had to work well, for me anyway, and I'll just speak for me. And I, I call it manage up and manage down. And so it was that sense, keep the boss happy so they kept you. And then keep your team happy mm. so that they would, they would work with you. And when you are in that constant, I would say, almost performance mode, you know, juggling this one, I can't have you not like me. Oh, I can't, you know, do this. The difficulty is the freedom. Like when, when I launched my company four years ago, I could really do anything I wanted. You know, I mean, who, like who's going to stop me? You know what I mean? Like I really had this complete blank canvas, free reign, so to speak. And that was weird. Because oh, yeah, the, it was. It was because I didn't know what, like, what do you do with all of this, like, freedom? I'm looking <laughs> around for, like, somebody to be like, oh, no, do that. Tell them this. No, I need you to do X. And and, and none of them were wow. around. I thought the big problem or in the beginning was going to be, like, when you're in corporate, you always had, to, you had people to help you. I, I thought that was going to be the bigger adjustment. Like, okay, the IT people will help you with your tech stuff and, and, and the assistants will help you with this. The bigger problem was the big blank slate. And it was just you. And that took me a while to get right with that. Did you get up at the same time? Was it, is it, was it different in the beginning? Was it like, oh, I'm going to sleep in a little bit in the beginning? Absolutely. Is, it, is that the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, now oh we're talking. So here we go. Yeah, so I launched Stuff in Media. I remember this. So I had left Univision and I'm in Hawaii. I take a trip to Hawaii because I could. And so it's like, so if I go to Hawaii awesome. and my sister at the time was living in Hawaii and it was, it was wonderful. I finally got to see her. And so I went to my, I saw my sister Denise in Hawaii and I extended the trip a few times and yeah, it was like, well, I'm just going to stay in Hawaii longer. I'll just work from Hawaii. I'll work from the beach. I'll work from, you know, and it, and it certainly wasn't the most grueling. I still remember how exhilarating it was. Like, it was an amazing feeling, like, to be like, oh, my God, this is mine, and I can do and say and be and, you know, wow. pivot. But it just took me a while to create systems that, that that worked for me systems that i wouldn't take advantage of like i'll get up every day at 4 a.m and then you don't and then you know what i mean and then it's like oh. wait you mean that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> Jay, it but, was like, but 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 i will be yeah. a miracle morning and then i'm gonna do so i have every jake seal the books behind you I have every one of these are going to be like my. No, these are pageless. These are just. 
So I wish right. they could see it on right. the video. Yeah, these are so these, right. Oh, they 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 hold. They're like, hollow. They're like the and they hollow. have change. I put change in them. Yeah. Um, and so no, my but, my alcohol's in here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. So, um, I it was a sense of I I so much I'm going to. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that, but, but, oh. you know, and then I'm gonna, and and I did, and I'm not beating myself in the sense that like things got done, and I worked with people, and I can still remember, I, Jack, I can still remember the first job I got, like it, like the first voiceover, really, I still remember. Oh my God, I got home from Hawaii. I re, oh no, no, I got I, it was the first part of it I did in Philadelphia. It was a voice job, first time I was being directed by somebody. It kind of happened fast, so. I go to Hawaii, launch stuff in media. They have to do a change to the voice thing. And I learned on the fly that I could do that from a hotel room. So I did. And I remember it was a great feeling. And what I was just realizing as I was getting ready for like I'm speaking in two days. And I realized like what I was going to have was the second job was six months after the first one. <laughs> so oh, I went scary. six months between job one and job two. And so you get a lot of time to set up a lot of different systems, to tear down a lot of different systems. And I needed apparently a lot of time to get myself into a place to be able to, to realize a couple of things. Like what I'm doing is different than what I was doing four years ago, not just the systems, but what I want to do. Um, I couldn't have answered the question four years ago. Exactly what the hell do you want to do? Really? I thought I knew. I thought I knew. I'll, I'm going to be a voiceover star. That's what I'm going to be. And I had no idea at that time that I wanted to coach people in regards to how they present. I had no idea that I was going to, you know, the audiobook thing, I, I, I would have guessed that. I'm not saying I knew I was going to do it, but it would make sense because that was part of the linear part of using my voice. Yeah. But speaking to people, none of that, none of that was even remotely in my radar. And I think I needed the time, at least a couple of years, to realize what is the purpose of what I want to do. And why do I want to do it? Why, why do you think the time is so important? You got to bang your head. See, if you're so conditioned to answering to Monday, Monday is a sales meeting here. Let me give you an example. I still think of this, right? It took me a while to get this out of my system. I can still tell you chapter and verse. Monday, 9.30 a.m. was the Atlanta sales meeting. Wednesday, 9 a.m. was the Univision Philly sales meeting. Uh, the Raleigh sales meeting was Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. The corporate national sales meeting was Thursday at 11.45 a.m. The conference call. I could still tell you what time these wow. specific calls were because they were so ingrained. You were, you were on, you, I, at, toward the end, I did it for 27 years. Toward the end, you're on autopilot because you're just responding to every reminder in your calendar and half of them you're not putting in they're just being put in for you you know put yourself were you depressed the there at the end yeah yeah Absolutely. did you know you were yes uh i was i knew i was done it was a terrible thing it there was there was all sorts of weird feelings to know that but I knew it nonetheless. And how I really knew at the very end was the bad stuff, the things that bothered me, really bothered me. And the things that I used to find really exhilarating, like a big victory, a great client meeting, a new relationship, like closing this big whatever, didn't matter that much. Wow. And that's how I knew. Like the good wasn't necessarily good. And the bad was just amplified like tenfold, you know? And so when it ended, and it was at the end, really, like at the beginning, at the very end of 2018, beginning of 2019, uh, I, it was weird in that I had no idea 
like, well, what is reality going to be? I've done this for decades. Wow. And now it's time. But I can say to my credit, there was almost no lag time between the end and the beginning of Duffin Media. There was almost Why do you no think that is? Mean, I started buying all sorts of voiceover equipment. I bought it literally within like two weeks. Wow. <laughs> I, I have, I had gotten a, uh, somebody to guide me. I'm working with a tech engineer. You need like this, that there's something if folks, if you're, you're not seeing what I'm pointing to, but I'm just literally like my voiceover studio is literally behind me. That oh, was yeah. all purchased and assembled and brought into my home. This is a second mic. The first one's behind me. All of that was done within a month, within 30 days, everything was here and ready to go. Were and you I the type to get things done at work? Yes. So that's a part of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. You think it, there could have, it could, uh, it could have been lost at, in the tr in the transition though maybe because like, that happens to people i gotta get done i gotta get done i gotta get done yeah there's a little bit of that yeah, mm. right uh and, mm. and it's be and and you can almost finish the sentence with i gotta get done or else or something's going to happen or something bad is going to occur so huh. it was I gotta get ready. I gotta get ready. And so I did. So this was <laughs> all done. This wow. was all ready to roll. Uh, and I actually then took the trip to Hawaii and technically did the LLC. You know what I mean? The website was launched. Wow. I, the first promotional push w was done and it was ready to go. And then as I said, I probably needed a couple years before. Is it weird to be sense. worth so much more to the marketplace just stepping outside of that building <laughs> that's funny <It> just <laughs> like maybe we should it's be really talking to the audience on this right like oh my god yeah come on right there there's people that are in a business maybe they're the first five years in or one year in or two year mm -hmm. in or they want to start a business mm -hmm. because they, they they have they have a job and that they they kind of like where you were at mm -hmm. so come on First question is, is it weird to be worth so much more to the marketplace by just stepping outside? By just being myself, you know? It's just really amazing, and it's weird. I had a conversation. <laughs> somebody said something to me yesterday. Uh, I was lucky I got this chance. You know somebody, he's a big fan of you, and I just was with him. Me? Oh, he's a big fan of you. He references you constantly. I oh, was that's with, cool. Uh, Avi, I was with Avi Cohen yesterday. Oh, we love Avi. No, oh, right? No. Oh my God, he's freaking. By awesome. the time they listen to this, we may have we may have had him on. Love, 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 it's love great man. Avi Cohen. And one of the things is one of the cool things they say about Avi Cohen, which is kind of similar. He he sees me, and 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 I really am grateful for that. Uh, I. You know, and it was like, it's not like I felt like we had a whole truckload of things in common, but he sees me. <laughs> and so it's like, it, it, it's perfect. It's like, the it, it's perfect. And I, <laughs> and I say, because anytime I'm with him, I can't have a conversation with Avi where he doesn't reference you uh, at some point in terms of a mentor and all that. Jay Duran. <laughs> <laughs> I love you no, it's like so well. he's, you he's do that such, so well. He is such a personality and charisma and that's uh, it. What a blessing he is. What a blessing you're right. So here's why I bring it up. So I'm speaking on his behalf at an event yesterday. Oh, are you? Wow. I was yesterday. It just happened last night. And so I was it was just the way that that I think of it, it's like he said something to me that was just so gratifying. You know, I'm like it ended. I say, hey, look, I hope it was okay for you. I hope that's, you know, so you always add value. To it. <laughs> I love them. And, right. And I know that sounds self serving, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, I didn't know that. You know, I hoped that. I hoped. 
and all of that overcompensating one of the things i've shared that i really believe one of the things that probably made me pretty good in regards to my former field was because i was such an avid people pleaser i could compare myself to like the harried wait staff person that was constantly needing to know if you wanted anything else and do you can i get you another drink do you want more of this do you want more of that and clients because that's exactly what they want is just to be served <laughs> you know, overserved. So it'd be like, well, how's John Duffin in the field of advertising and client relations? Oh, he's great, you know, because you're just constantly checking on them. Rather than forging your own identity or adding legit real value based upon your own authentic personality. Mm. that's the kind of thing like i wish i knew that i i wish no nah, that's yeah. that's that's putting a burden on somebody else i wish i had allowed myself to know that sooner what's the distinction and how do you allow yourself and just the freedom the confidence just to hear it the freedom to mm. take a risk i don't regret it i do not regret anything the fact that i get to experience this now it, it, it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful uh i i I know there, I'll bet you there's people that never get to experience this. And so how long it takes you to get it or, or that sort of thing. It's amazing to me. It's exhilarating to me to be able to walk and, and speak to an audience of people and feel no sense of concern. You know what I mean? Feel completely engaged. I do care. I'm not saying I don't care. I, ve I yeah. care very deeply. Um, is it presence? But my presence is really there. And I can literally look at somebody in the eye and not be so deathly afraid of what you're going to do, or are you going to run, or are you going to point and laugh, those sorts of things. And that's why I miss it. it Just talking to you right now. I, I miss it. Thank you. It's just, it's fun for me. And it's, it's like, it, it, it's as gratifying for me that it was so the fact that people like it, that's great. Uh, but I'm pretty certain, as I said earlier, there's probably other people in that were in my shoes that are in it now, you know, and I'm not typically the type to be like, quit your job or, you know, it, it, nothing like that. But my thought is, if, if, if people can get just the freedom to know that they could at least take smaller risks. Right. You know, it's like it, 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 it's just a great feeling. And so that's what I've been able to the time. Mm. That four years, that first couple of years, I needed the time. I really needed the time to bang my head. I needed the time to understand that there actually is a sense of urgency, that the reason that people are getting up at 4 a.m. is not because of the joy of being up at 4 a.m. It's because they have a sense of urgent purpose mm -hmm. or wow. need or fulfillment. And it's like, listen to them. Fucking listen to them, you know? <laughs> It's like, and I, and that was, that's directed to me. Listen to them. You know what I mean? It's like, pay attention to them. So I listen more. I listen more. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a, a humility piece? Oh, I think a little bit. Freedom, humility, confidence. Yeah. I think it's all of it. It's like, sure. I, why not? It, it's like, if I find out I'm wrong, if I find out I didn't do it the right way, there's often no colossal consequence. I just go correct it and do it another way. And that's what I've been learning like over the last couple of years. So the experience wow. that I get to share, the things that I get to teach, it's weird. Man. Like, so I've spoke, I've spoke, hello. Um, <laughs> Grammar is still a work in progress, yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I've I have spoken more. <laughs> Which audio book is that one? Of months, yeah, the English. I'm still working on English as a primary language, but um, <laughs> but I've spoken more in, in 2023 than I ever have in my life, and I mean, and we're living. And you mean that on stage? 
Yeah, it's stage classroom. Like I've had the chance. I, I've 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 taught at, I've taught at Temple University this spring. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I taught for uh, uh, Stephen Facenda, one of the communication department's professors, had me speak one night, and so I got to do that. That was in late February. I spoke wow. at St. Elizabeth's University. I spoke to their baseball team, and I mean, go figure. Like, like what? And my thought was, why would they want me to talk about? what baseball you know what i mean <laughs> it's how not, did it go it was great it was great and and why i say that was not because i was so great you know from the engagement that's how you know not oh i'm so good or they laughed or none of that it's more you feel the engagement that's the fun part of a live conversation hmm. it was always my favorite part of presenting client relationships it's my favorite part of being a friend mm. is is an in-person feeling the body language feeling the energy and when you get to do that and impact people it seemed to resonate what, you know? what did you talk about mm -hmm. well what i talked about the for saint elizabeth's university well for temple university first what i talked about mostly was using communications in business. I thought for myself, somebody, thank God, a dear friend of mine, business professional, literally changed my perspective. I really thought my sweet spot in speaking to people would be people like 50 plus, who kind of had a degree of success, who had flatlined to a certain extent, and I knew that I could ride the ride in, in the field that I was in for a lot of years. And I watched people get like knocked off the ride. So my thought was, I'll speak to those people. And it was my friend, Karen Crane from Crane Communications. And I spoke to her company this year too. And um, she's the one that said to me, she's like, John, like younger people, they're not speaking to anybody about anything. Wow. And she said, they don't, they don't have to. It's not a knock on, it's like, they just don't have to. They're working with headsets. The headsets never come off, um, but they have to interview, they have to interview for jobs. They literally have to look at somebody and speak to somebody. If they want to go into sales, they're gonna have to communicate with somebody somewhere and they have zero experience. So what I was able to do and what I've been able to, to do, which is respect the people enough that I'm speaking with, that I'm not telling a bunch of 1980s war stories. You know what I mean? Which who cares? You know what I mean about that? You try we to- We don't watch black and white. That's <laughs> <laughs> like- Take out those words. yellow pages, kid. And- Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The repeat offender is back. <laughs> I'm still, I'm sorry. I'm still thinking that's hilarious. That's still my favorite. And I may need to stick that. I may need a t-shirt repeat offender. Jesus. But it's, but nobody wants old news. And that's the thing. And what do I talk about? Something that relates to them without coming off as pandering. And, 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 you know? and where, and, and this is, this is in a classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So St. Elizabeth's university and temple were both in classrooms. The, St. Elizabeth, well, Temple was their evening communications class. I was brought in as the instructor for one night. And what I taught them was to be able to speak authentically and to be able to use techniques that I've, that I've curated. I created a course and curated techniques that could be used in like game day situations. What, like I'm, what I mean is when you are in the midst of a conversation and something doesn't go right, that you don't freeze or fall apart. Yeah. Oh, and people do that. I think they do. I think, I think when you're thin skinned, I think when you're inexperienced, it takes very little, somebody throws you an objection and then you catch somebody becoming either defensive or disinterested or losing confidence. And yeah. my thought is very often it's not teaching them what to say. They know what to say. They've been deluged with, here, read this book and say this line. But my whole deal is using your body and your authentic voice to sound true and right. So that all of that time you've spent preparing the words and, and the 
bullet points and the PowerPoint slides and, and, and what have you don't all you don't all of a sudden sound defensive and weird. What do you mean? Which is what people do in, in a heartbeat. And then because no one has an attention span anymore. The first time I hear something odd coming from another person, I want to write them off. And so success relationships are so often hinged upon something so singular and so fixable in my mind, right? And it's not study more. It's not memorize the pages more. You got this. It's being confident. I've, I've, there's a voice coach that I've worked with. His name is Dave Walsh, business voice coach. The company's called The True Tell. And his line is, the vo your voice is the last pass of authenticity. If somebody hears disinterest, boredom, or thinks they hear disinterest, boredom, uncertainty, like, I don't know, do you think? You may think nothing of that. Well, do you think it's okay? And somebody else might be hearing, or they don't know what they're talking about. I'm either coming in for the kill or I'm going to check out because so many people now are carrying so much baggage with them that they're just ready to dismiss or walk away from a conversation. Jay, you and me right now, well, this is wonderful because you're good enough, wise enough, and experienced enough that you stay in a conversation, you ask curious questions because you want to know more, and you're not writing off somebody based upon something or guessing incorrectly. What I'm trying to instill with people at any age, but especially younger is don't let a whole situation fall apart because you sound unsure. Even wow. when you're not unsure, you might sound it. So how can you sound more confident? How can you be a little bit sound a little bit less afraid? How can you sound as if you were engaged? And, and that's all tricks that I've been privileged to know share and that's some of the things that i taught for a job interview with with saint elizabeth's university the baseball team maybe if they're lucky they'll all get drafted and they'll <laughs> all be playing in mlb they're still gonna have to negotiate you know maybe they'll have an agent to negotiate all the contracts maybe it'll be one of their parents maybe it'll be them maybe they won't get drafted at all and then they got to figure out well, okay so what the hell they're going to do who they're going to talk to and my whole deal is can you sound engaged which when you sound it chances are you are engaged and when you are engaged mm. you'll keep a conversation going longer and sometimes that's really all you want to be able to do just keep a conversation going a little longer do you recommend acting classes the what's the one where mm. it's improv or i guess uh, that's the word oh my god that's the word absolutely yes i love to say that why because improv classes take a lot of work and they're great so here's what i'm what i'm my number one thing that i instill none of these hacks replace preparation none of these hacks replace knowing the content if you're in a business conversation over prepare over prepare you're going to speak to an audience over prepare in none of these things replace that they don't replace sloppiness they don't replace laziness over prepare but with improv you're doing a ton of studying with improv of what the situation is and then you're asked to forget the dialogue and react. And the reason I am able to react in a conversation is because I, I, I take the time. Like when, when I go to speak, I spend a ton of time knowing every arc of the story. I don't care about the exact bullet points. And with improv, that's what they're conditioning you to do with an acting in improv class. They're going to say to you, Jay, and just because I'm looking at you like with this, right? You're going to have these six books behind you. You're going to have those five, that, that whiteboard right there. It'll be there. You'll have this. to. What would you put there? It will be 
literally blowing up your mind with details. And you're going to fill all that in and then you're going to be so engaged in a situation that you're not going to be the type that's screaming line line what's my line what's my you know what i mean you'll just know what to say wow and that's to me you just described it beautifully when someone's speaking when i'm coaching someone to speak i don't want you to know any of the bullet points i want you to know every single bit of the content i think my entire life up to this point has just been one long improv <laughs> but guess what that makes you so i'm ready to ready. stop acting but right but this is the, here's the beauty with improv that's not acting that my favorite acting course that i ever took i i, oh, I, remember I need this. to take classes because uh, I, I have a deep desire to, to do that yeah i bet and i bet you'd be amazing because you do the prep work that's the part of it is that you're so it, it, it's the easiest way to describe it. It's this that you've heard the expression, this heightened state of awareness. OK, that's what it is. That you are. I'll give you an improv. Yeah. OK, it's a real story. OK, yeah. I'm going to meet Barry Habib and Dan Habib for dinner. OK. Barry's a friend of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've heard listeners. Much. Yep. Check his episodes out. I don't have them memory memorized. He's done multiples. He's a wonderful friend. We show up. I show up. They sit me down. They're already sitting down. And the waitress says, well, are you all right? And I go, by what do you mean? Mm-hmm. She says, you know, the surgery. Oh my God. <laughs> Your face. So I'm sitting down. Barry's oh across from me. Dan, you know, all of a sudden, the ice packs come out. He had told the waitress that I had recently. Now, this is oh way God. before <laughs> he knew that he said, there's really few people like Barry. Just like He's a great time to go out with. And now we have this story forever. Oh my God. And that's perfect. This is way before he met Jenna, by the way. Okay. He told, this is years ago. He told oh the wait staff mm -hmm. that his friend was coming in for dinner. He ate to, to show his and my devotion mm -hmm. to my future bride. I just had gotten circumcised because she was Jewish. <laughs> Now, I don't even know him that well up to this point. How did Maybe, you react? Well, of course I said, oh, well, I'm better now. <laughs> and I that I got the ice. And they literally came out and gave me ice. And I just sat with the ice. And I I, I just accepted the, the, the... Oh, you just accepted the reality. This is the reality. I just got the surgery. I've got the ice. And now mm -hmm. it's like me and... Him and, and his son and the and the waitress. And now you're in it. And she never found out. So because this is how I looked at it in like the blink of an eye. If I'm not open to this, mm -hmm. there's so much mentally, like, you know, kind of like all coming in. Like, if I'm not open to this, then it's me that the joke is on and not the waitress. Now, at the same time, I'm not going to take myself too seriously. Mm -hmm. This is like a fun thing. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hilarious. I'm not going to overthink it, mm -hmm. although I'm a thoughtful person. But I enjoy, I enjoyed the, the, the game. I enjoy mm -hmm. the improvisation. Yep. I guess that's a form of improv, is it not? Oh, that's 1,000% a form of improv. And now I want to tell this to you because I mm -hmm. like, I'd like you to know more and more about me. I, that's just my personality. Yeah. I've always been open Mm -hmm. I'm open to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, my, my thought is you have to be able to have some degree of bravery to allow yourself. See, people that are either brave or a high sense of willing, like, like I'm willing to take a leap is, is where I see that. Because if you're, if somebody is fearful, defensive, they don't do that. They don't play the game.
they will not play the game. No, no, no. See, no. You <laughs> your face, all in. Right there was all her. You know what no, I mean? That was like pretty saying, it's like, but dramatic. That's not you, because they have a sense of fear that they can't let their guard down. Because some now, when I was that sort of back then years ago, people. But I don't know if I'm doing it because I'm courageous. I could I could make an argument. Some days I wake up and I'm like, and I and I'm very clearly a coward. Oh, we all are. I don't mean twenty four seven. Yeah. But you're willing to put yourself in that situation. At that moment, mm. you were willing to trust the situation. You were not the type that would throw a blanket on it and say, "Now, now, Barry, now, say now." I, I don't know what you mean. But, <laughs> and you've seen people do that, but you were willing to play along either because you trusted Barry, because you were just willing to go along. No, you know, no, yeah, it's you know, I, I'm willing to go along. I'm willing to add a little uh, to and see where it goes and see where something yeah. goes. I think from a professional standpoint, well, what are the you know, you know what it is? I don't want to shame somebody else. Yeah. Because I've been shamed. Mm -hmm. So even if paradoxically I'm feeling shame because I'm in a situation I didn't sign up for yeah. that could test my um, pride, mm -hmm. I think I just don't want other people to be shamed. Okay. So I wouldn't want to put my friend, because I don't know their intentions too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just played along. And I think it's a great, there's a, there's a cool depth to the way you said But that's improv, right? It definitely is improv. That's just one example. Things like that have happened in my mm -hmm. life. Now, some of it makes me think, you know, people test you because I've been told I'm an intimidating person. I don't feel intimidating. Well, here's I where, I, where I've learned from you. Weak. I remember saying that about you to you one time years ago. Like, and I, I was wrong. See, this is where I believe the ability to be able to just simply communicate come from curiosity. I think Jay, for you, part of it is you didn't, I wasn't even thinking you, about you. you weren't even getting enough credit. We actually had that conversation, not that night in Philadelphia. It was after, um, and it was in reference to another person without pulling all that, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. What I mean is, but it was more. And I remember thinking you could come. I felt like, with me not knowing you as well as I do now, and this is a big part of it, I think the, one of the cool, one of the many cool things of knowing you is that as I get to know you more and more and more and more and more, this is why, this is why communication in general is so important. You realize perception is so often wrong. One of the things I teach about in terms of the course, huh. I thought you meant, and so often people are guessing wrong. And that's the reason why it's so important to be authentic because <clears throat> it takes almost nothing to throw somebody off of your scent. You know what I mean? You think you're being completely authentic and somebody's guessing wrong. I now know you. I don't see anything about you that would be bully. Enough. I got a, I got a letter this week and someone mm -hmm. said, you're so authentic. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> That's their issue. <laughs> it was a very mean? constructive, nice letter. Right, but right. Like, but that's not for you to fix them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 well, I don't know. I guess, you know, hey, I, I don't, what do you think? I think you'd be as authentic uh, for me. I, I worry less now about that because I spent too many years worrying about what that person thought. I don't really have the bandwidth. I don't mean to, I, I want to become inconsiderate, but what I mean is if I have to button up every hole of, oh, does she think, does he think, are they, are you good? We good? They, I have like, so many people. That, uh, no, uh, John, we have a lot in common. And I care what people think. I absolutely care what people think. You have, I think that's just decency. But you can't be so fixated on it that what you think gets removed. Because I don't have mm. time to worry about what I'm thinking because I have to go back to the table and serve those 12 other people, make sure they got enough drink water. Like, am I making my past right because I 
want to repent or mm -hmm. is it because I'm so narcissistic? <laughs> Somebody, the answer, I, 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 why, here's why I'm laughing. That don't even think uh, for a second one thing against me. I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, <laughs> no, but you're right. That you was, know? I've been guilty of that. I need to go back and correct X from a former relationship. Every I had somebody say to me, and why exactly was that? Did they, that person ask you to? No. Um, it was more like I needed to make me feel better. That You know what I mean? And it was like, so I think. I guess I do. I guess I do. But what I find is I care enough, but I now. I've held myself back. I have no interest in doing that anymore, but it doesn't mean I want to become a difficult person. It doesn't mean I don't care what mm. people think. I, 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 I feel as if now the relationships that I have are stronger than I've ever had in my life. And I know that sounds so shallow. It's like, I don't have as many of them, but I mean, they're wonderful. much more intense. Well, it's because I can really be more in them. That's all. Not because I'm a better anything. You know, I can be much more engaged rather than worrying about, okay, and having like that wall or that layer of that defense. And that's, that's to me, the art of, it goes business speak, personal speak. I can just say what I want to be able to say. And I think people want that. Ultimately, that's all they want to know is where you're coming from. Do you ever think, think really about, gas, you know, what'd you say? I don't think people want to invest a ton of time in guessing what you think. They'd rather just know. Are you more honest today than in the past? Yes. What are the fruit? What's the fruit of that? What's the results? Mm -hmm. what, what does that bring you in, in, in your life? You can move forward. Like if I said it in a way such as if you had to keep going back to a former situation, a former conversation, a former situation, a former relationship, and revisiting it and revisiting it and revisiting it. And I think I closed the door on that, but wait a minute, maybe I should have. And that second guessing, it's hard to propel yourself forward. And by forward, it's simply a matter of I want to be able to put myself in a position where I am not sitting and doubting myself. And so the easiest way for me to do that is to handle something to the best of my ability. Here, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Nothing heavy. This was literally last, so two days ago. Be careful for what you wish for. I called, I was the announcer for the first time I called a triathlon. So I was the announcer for a triathlon. I got to do it Sunday, right? Great experience, fun. Hey, and by the way, as, as I've come to learn, if you get the choice between announcing a triathlon and having to do a triathlon, <laughs> go with the announcing. That's <laughs> way better. Yeah, you that, just watch the ball cross the finish line. You just yell, good job. <laughs> and they, meanwhile, have ran, swam, rode a bike. And in this case, in the rain. Here's the example. So I'm supposed to be there. I agree that I will be there Sunday at 4 a.m. This is the first time I've ever had to set up audio equipment. Other than my own, my own personal stuff. I know how to do that. I'm bringing somebody else's big, heavy equipment and I got to lug it down a hill, all sorts of things. So I'm a basket case. I, I like I, this is not in my bandwidth. I, I will be there at 4 a.m. So I go to bed at 7 p.m. Get up at 12.30 a.m. I'm like, should I just stay up? Because I'm deathly afraid I'm going to go to sleep, right? <laughs> but I'm like, it's 12.30. I still have an hour and a half. I'm getting up at 2, go back to sleep. I overslept. I freaking overslept. So I don't, I typically undersleep. I don't typically over, right? Like some high school. Cool. I am committed. I'm going to be there at 4 a.m. It's 10 after four and I get out of bed. Horrifying. Deptford, New Jersey. I am out of my mind and I am going through every horrific, awful thought, like including I'm not going. 
I'd be better off just not going. You know, I'm a failure. I'll never work again. Blah 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 blah. So here's <laughs> for some reason it I just locked in. I'm like, okay, fine. Ice cold shower, one sip of coffee, out the door, was there, it's 5 a.m. Big apology, but not four hours of, you know, on my knees in front of the guy, you know, okay. and, stuff, and just went and set up. And all the stuff that I thought, well, I'm never going to know how to do this, but, but, but some miracle I did. Everything got done. I was still an hour early. Like nothing. I mean, we just literally sat there for an hour. This is because, a good what this occurred, is so not that i'm such an amazing technical wizard none of that the only thing that changed was the realization that i didn't stay mired in i'm a failure i'm a loser i let them down i'm this it is kind of narcissistic you know it's like just go do the job and so and i did and it was done and it was great um Too early and I was, I was in, we were done with a solid hour before anything took place. And literally, and, and, and I'm telling you, I turned the mic on, on, right? That was the sign. Like, is this going to work? Hit this button and all of the wow. contraptions either work or they don't. I hit it, the green light went on, and blah, 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 I started to talk. So if I was all fixated on I'm a failure, I'm a loser, this is a problem, why me, I can't believe it, I never oversleep, blah, 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 blah. and all that fixation on yourself, I'd have never gone. I very possibly would have never gone, or I would have you done think a terrible you've sabotaged a lot, a lot of your, your life? Probably, probably. I mean, I'm not, I'm not throwing myself under a bus. You know what I've just started doing the last things, right? few years, the last few years? What's that? The little voice in my head. I do the opposite. Tell me what you mean. That voice in my head will tell me, don't do it. Hmm. Whatever it says not to, I have to do it. Because you just go do it? I love it. I, I, I'm a saboteur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th there's a saboteur in there. I'm not talking about the conscience. <laughs> I got no, that. That's like, you know. <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ten Commandments. Yeah, follow those. I'm talking about the voice in the head. The wife thing, you're like, no. Yeah. Uh, follow that one. Okay. Something with the lamb and the thing. <laughs> and the... <laughs> I get the vegan thing. But I was going to say that it's. I... I'm talking about the voice that says, like, don't don't go to that meeting. What do you think it's trying you know, to know? Or like whatever that if there's an excuse or, Oh, okay. I don't, I don't Sorry. feel, I don't feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, or there's some kind of, I don't feel it anymore. It's, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I, 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 whenever I feel that. Yeah. I must do it because gotta, yep. there's something about, one of the battles that I have in my life is that a part of me is trying to sabotage this. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I can't let it do it. So I, 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 I can't even count the times where I do the opposite of the voice and um, everything succeeds. I'm so glad you do it. I just had this example. So here's an example of what I used to do. I've described this. With other high performance coaches which is i'm all i'm only saying not to compete i'm only saying it with that sense of thank god you ignore that like so, so i have this image that i that i have and i remember when i was like a young adult right and i was learning how to ski and i was an awful skier like a, like awful and then i got decent then i got decent and why i only bore you with that was i can remember i would start to go to a certain speed and then I would get afraid. And instead of challenging myself, right? Okay, let's, you know what I mean? Let's see what this is, right? I would literally, the easiest way, the most literal way to say it is, I would get scared. And instead of go faster, I would purposely lean back and allow myself to fall, like land on my backside. Like I would allow myself that 
and I'd stop myself. Yeah. I see that a little in terms of what you're describing, and I've done that. Don't do that because you're going yeah, to get I think hurt. That's the Fall same back. thing. Land, you know what I mean? Land softly, land on your butt. Like that's, that's okay. You know what I mean? That's better than taking the risk. And I love when you say that I have to, I have to say yeah to it now. And by the way, me too. Me too. I absolutely. Yeah, it's led me to compromise on my word. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like my thought is I could spend an infinite amount of time if I chose worrying about the things I didn't do or didn't do well enough or did, but so what? Uh, I do them now. And and for me, it's like, mm. would I have been better doing it at 40 than 50, 60? I don't know, but I'm doing them now. And so that's why it's really important for me that, yeah, when I get scared, I have to say, yeah, I have to say, yeah. And that's wow. where it's like that example on Sunday. It's like, no, just show up. I don't care if that guy throws a bucket of ice at me when I get there for being 45 minutes late. I don't care if he sets me on fire because of that, but I'm showing up and I'm going to go do the job for him because that's what he wanted from me. And it worked out perfectly because I wasn't some big weirdo baby. You know what I mean? It's, it's mm. like you, you put the other person, see the situations can be other people. And that's why the gifts that I get to do now, Coach, speak, be here with you, say something that's actually authentic mm. and not worry about just making you happy. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like, it's I value you too much that, it, that it's like, I just want to, I just want to talk. Am I being funny? I don't know. Um, it's like, I just want to be authentic. And if I can help somebody get there a little bit faster, a little bit more seamlessly, great, great, because it's is a it life hard, fulfilled as opposed to a life unfulfilled. Is it hard? To, I want to know this before no. we end. Yeah, sure. Uh, among a couple things. Is it hard to do an audio book? Oh, so the actual narration? Great question. Not really. Because I feel like I can get into the character. It's an enjoyable thing for me. I love it. Yes. Okay. The that part I was really I, I I was pleasantly surprised. Like I felt like I could get into the spirit of it, the character of it, and all that sort of okay. thing. This was a self help motivational book, so there weren't a lot of characters. There were only a few. I don't know that I can do Shakespeare. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can't. But what was difficult was the tech. So you're editing out like every breath and you have to do that or. I did every bit of it. I went from beginning to end, you know, and then I'm separating the chapters. So all sorts of stuff that was mind numbing, right? So how many hours? 697. <laughs> you know, like, you got, I got more, up, so I, oh my God. One so piece over here. Oh yeah, my God. Like, Pull out John Paul Sartre, right? Pull out Sartre and it'll be oh. like, a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how many hours would it take to do? We got it, being see, and nothingness. It's 2023 now. I'm thinking by 2097. I can't even read a page. That it's, without, it's, oh my God. It's a I, very I difficult remember, book. I remember that philosophy course in college. There got to a, be a point in that class. That's not being in nothingness, is it? This is. Oh, of course it is. Um, I'm in the philosophy class at Villanova the first time, before I flunked out that first time, um, I could not keep a straight face. I just couldn't keep a straight face. During it, I was getting so confused. So if I was going to do that as an audio book. And just to give you the benefit of the doubt, like it's, a, it's a, like the chapters, you know, the phenomenon of being and the being of the phenomenon. Like that's the whole book. <laughs> Nobody knows how to read this shit. Are you kidding me? I, you know, I do it so I, can feel worse about yeah, I think you are one of the only people in my life that is putting up social media posts about <laughs> being and nothingness. I think you're the only oh, that's cool. one of the reason I love you. Come on, man. You put up 90. I, I read them all. I, uh, I, I, I have a, I have Hegel next to my bed. Oh, I have the phenomenology of better? spirit uh -huh. on page seven. I've been on page seven for about two years. I got works of love in the library there. I'm still on page 160 something on. 
I got, but the, you know, the theory of moral sentiments, I'm looking at it. I'm still not done with that. Smith. I'm working on Cher's autobiography. Nitsen, That's a lot of heavy reading. Um, Tolstoy. I love the idea of it. Uh, now, frankly, audiobooks, and that's yeah. why kudos to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do physically read with a, with a level of consistency now, and I had the last few years, and my physical ability to read has as in. Um, oh my god! I, you and deep me how? Well, but the audiobooks is the reason I have been able to mm -hmm. get through text because that's. Hey, if I was a reader, reader, I, I likely would have went another path in my life. Like I, I likely would have, but I, I found, I found in my traversing of, um, or in my travels, right. Entrepreneurial people, mm -hmm. you know, our audio people, a lot of the time, they're not physical readers. They, they I can't sit still, or the mind is going this way mm -hmm. and that way whether it's ADD or this mm -hmm. or that, or this or that, there's all sorts of things that, but I found that entrepreneurs listen, they're listeners. They, they listen to audiobooks. I don't know what can you, and, and so who does do for doing the audiobooks? It's yeah, it's really, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the first one I got, so I've done two full and I've done two pieces. So four total. Right. And the first one I secured being part of a Lewis Howes, mastermind group i part oh, wow. of the mastermind group and a dude heard me speak on there and i i asked a question or whatever and afterwards a dude heard me speak and sends me an email saying would you read my book i thought it was oh you need me to read your book for you and let me know what you think and i'm like all like weird sarcastic right and he's like no i want you to read my book the backstory and it's beautiful the author don m haney suffers from a vocal condition called spasmodic dysphoria and it it and what he was saying was that he has he he speaks but because the, his voice wavers based upon certain traits in the vocal yeah. words, that he needed somebody to actually do the audio book. And that's where it began literally by being in a mastermind. Would group. you do more of these? Uh, 100%. Yes. And what I was saying, the, the first one took me a while because I wasn't great with the Can I send you a list? Because there's some that I haven't found on audible. Not do being in nothingness. Cause that just would be oh. a fair for me. <laughs> but I um, got a list that they're not on audible yet. Let's put you to work. There you go, brother. Heck, I mean, yeah, I, you find. How do you do that? Isn't that a thing where you can sign up to audible? ACX and start and, doing audio books uh, that aren't on there. You're beautiful. That's beautiful. That you know that the company is called ACX and ACX. You go in an audition, which I have done. So you go in an audition. The company is called yeah. ACX. This isn't on audible. Do me a favor. Government. So it's, it's Ludwig von Mies. Um, <laughs> I can't read the title. Yeah. Ludwig von Mises. Omnipotent government. Sounds you know, like let's go. Let's that, put you to um, work. Travelog. Um, Good luck with that. Yeah, no, no, maybe. I don't but know, I would. Else. I I realized there's. There's there got to be millions of books that are not on Audible. And you just said it. So remember, I was saying at the very beginning the part where I was like feeling like I needed to find my way, and I was all by myself, like starting the company and all. One of the things where I think for me, listening to audiobooks, it's another voice. It's a voice that you can listen to to help you not tell you what to do, but guide you a little bit. So even business books would be like something to me I was doing. I'd rather hear somebody say it than me need to flip all the pages. I would rather hear somebody tell me it would be like a work colleague at my former company, literally saying, hey, why don't you do this? Well, do, Try do it like that. Audiobooks now? Ask me that again. Just started to Jay. You and I talked about audiobooks. It had to have been five years ago when I first got to know you. Sure. And I just in the last 18 months have been going through audio, like I said, literally. Using How is it? How's it going? It's amazing because I do two things. Now I'm reading more, but for God's sake, I now can double up with yes. no difficulty because it's like it's it's not effortless, but I retain I retain way more information from an audio book than I do from a written book. Way I bet. I bet. 
I, my recall, like I started to doubt myself. You're not alone in that. Right. It's like, you remember most every of day it, I meet you know? people that say the same thing that are right. more entrepreneurial. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, there's something there. I don't think this research has been done well. And I bet the listeners, if they're listening to this, they're right. audible people. They just are. It's they may not audible. know that audiobooks is a thing. And and it's like, I just feel like that's the beautiful part where it's like in future conversations, I mean, you hear AI and people worried about that stuff, but the human engagement of a voice speaking naturally. You don't have to sound like a Shakespeare. You don't have to sound like an orator. Nobody wants you to. They want you to sound true and right. And that was one of the things that took me a long time. It's like, just speak to somebody like you're actually speaking to them. Just talk to them. It's like the most amazing gift. Just talk to somebody. No holds barred. That's why I love what we're doing tonight, man. Because like I said, you just talk to somebody. I think that's your, your one of your books. The, the dude heard me speak. <laughs> I love that, brother. <laughs> I mean, that could be a book. It could damn well could be a book. I that is absolutely. I don't want to sound like one of those guys that is going to be like, and I'm gonna. I hate when people do that. I hate when I do it. Oh, I, like I'm rather be I've done it or I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, I can resonate with that. I'm the same way. Um, but I fully intend to author a book, and I fully intend to. That's a 2023 project. Now, I've never written a book before, so I, I might be mired. Yeah, I mean, messages it. aren't received. Yeah, that, that's to me. It's it, it's how can you sound authentic? That's really going to be the whole point. It's, it's an extension of what I've been through and what I'm hoping that you don't necessarily have to go through. Your yeah. message sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the I went to the publisher with your message is pointless, but they they seem they asked me to go back and work on that a little bit. So I am going back <laughs> with more. <laughs> I don't care what you have to say. That's the <laughs> I don't care what you have to say. And you know, and the sequel just shut up. You know, I want you to give me feedback on this podcast we're going to release. Yeah, uh, this week, it's me and my partner and publisher. Uh, that we did 30 days of thought oh my god and yeah it's a very raw talk about i was just i basically turn it into a coaching appointment with, with me and him perfect asking him to rip apart why 30 days of thought didn't do as well as it could have mm -hmm. because and i don't want to give it all away but basically me <laughs> so i'd love your feedback on that episode i love that then count on it and you would love tyler he's a he's just a very special person um you align yourself with great people so i'd love to i, I definitely thank you. Want to check it thank out thank you i do oh. i do and folks, my last and again question. unfortunately it's an audio podcast but in case as i said i am one of the proud and i have a signed copy of 30 yeah. days of thought i'd uh, love to do a uh you know what i'd like to do with the book i'd like that? to do so, a, a well so 30 days of thought has needs to be an audio book that's number one absolutely i'd love to so there's a book by David Goggins, mm -hmm. not the most recent one, mm -hmm. but it was the one prior to this most recent book where he actually did. After each chapter, he'd have a conversation with his writer. Oh, about the chapter. So it was part audiobook, part podcast. I and love I, the I love the way that sounds. It almost like taking them back behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know? I'm going to send you the book and get your feedback on it. Because yeah. like, that's something I could see myself doing with another person mm -hmm. as far as audio of 30 Days of Thought. Mm -hmm. I, I, I very much, that's why I'm probing about how you did the audio because at some point I would want to do the audio version of 30 Days of Thought. And you should. I'd be open to doing something mm -hmm. though that was like a, a back and forth though. I think- I Anything you that know, I can do there's to something help, we yeah, could yeah, do with that, but th that's I'm going to send you the um, the audio, this audio book to get your feedback on it. But ultimately, the audio for 30 Days of Thought is going to come out after this next book that's that's going to be coming out. So I'm not rewriting 30 Days. I'm not doing a, a another edition. 30 Days is really 
Tyler talks about it on the show. He says that'll be the that's more of a book that people will go to that are fans after the book that they can understand comes out. So <laughs> I see. I felt like you started with a really practical book, but you wove you weaved so much of yourself in that it's like it's and no great, buts. I'm just saying that they great. It's like, I it's a great way to put it. You know, you started with a really practical idea. You made it unbelievably impractical, and you didn't say that. I'm saying that. Uh, no, I absolutely. And that's the story didn't of my that. life. That's the story of my life. <laughs> but it needs you to know? be. I feel like you. Otherwise, I just me, just me. Thank you. It's like that. People in general need some sort of a reason to want to follow someone's direction. They need something rather than you just saying, I need you to take a picture and write a quote and blah, blah, blah. Like, who's this? Well, I need to feel something. And I think you gave that. And I think that's to me where it was like, that's the part that made it work for me was it's like, well, this is why he's doing it. Not doing it to tell you what to do. The book works if I, if I have a relationship with the person. Got it. Okay. Got it. And and so in that mm-hmm. it's failed from a book sense, but it's good from a workbook sense. I got you. And I I'd say I, I'm proud of the book of what it was and who I was at the time. Mm-hmm. And I, I I've learned from mm-hmm. it's it. And I believe the next one is going to be better. Oh, it different, of course. No doubt. But but and I but I think there's still a lot of utility in 30 Days of Thought. I think it's worth doing an audio. I, I, do you think that? So can I ask you one? Su- no, I'm say I'll say it better. Can I make one suggestion in terms of even the way you asked it, which is this. there's make everything about that. Everything about what you're saying merits a yeah. Like like to me, do you think it sounds and do you think I should? Yeah. And do you blah, 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 that's just the loser. Like the you loser. don't buy it. Sounds like you don't buy it. And I believe I don't. Do. Okay, so to me, well, okay, well, that's a good reason then. Then it's like, but I just like playing the victim. Okay, and that's fine. But for myself, it's 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 a finished, complete work, and I'm a big believer. You said this to me, Jay. Here, I'll go. I'm not using the words against you. I'm using them with you, right? Yeah, do it. Help me out. The words matter. I remember a conversation that you and I had where I was removing words from a conversation and you were like, you can't because they are, once they're there, they're there. I actually have grown to believe that, meaning I find comfort in that. So at the time, you and me were in Fishtown and La Colombe and Fishtown was actually pretty new. So it goes back that far, right? And I'm only saying, so the way that you thought the way you absorbed information, the way you conveyed information back then, this was a complete work. And so four years later, five years later, the next book or what have you, I don't think it's fair to you. I don't think it's fair to readers to think that you should be, Christ, I wouldn't want you to be thinking the same way five years from now. It'd be weird, right? That if you thought exactly the same way with all like the time five minutes from now, I'll be thinking. And, and all, and you know what I mean? All the people you've spoken to, coached, learned from, life experiences, and you still want to tell me about your high school football days? Oh, like God. Al Bundy? You know what I mean? Like, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's like, so I believe it's perfect for what it was then. I, I'm upset that I haven't um, listened to the damn episode. You tell me what you think. I, well, wait a minute. Now, is it already published? I'm, just, I'm hijacking already, your episode to complain about that episode <laughs> in my life. It just shows you how little I've evolved over the years. I ain't fine at all. <laughs> Our friendship has evolved. And this, that's nonsense. Man. But is it already published? Is is the, is the It'll episode? be out this week. It'll be out this week. But it, yeah. It'll no, it'll be is, next. Is it it's coming Taylor? out next. Is it is it, you said it's with Taylor, you said, right? Uh, t- Tyler Wagner. I, thanks oh, yeah tyler wagner great great friend great friend of mine you're gonna get a kick out of it i can't wait to hear and it. and anyone listening to this listen to episode i think 138 mm-hmm. of the culture matters podcast it should be 138 tyler wagner's second appearance on the culture matters like podcast it. and you're yeah. gonna you're gonna like it so thanks, I'm excited for thanks it, john for letting me hijack this episode <laughs>
Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm starting to open up a bit more on the show. Good. And I'm starting to enjoy the show on another mm. level. Great. And I'm having repeat guests like you, friends. It means the world. A lot me. of it's like the show. I want to have a lot more repeat guests. Mm. I don't just want to have new people. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll invite the you know. But anyway, so I look forward to the next time you come on. But I, I oh, want to ask this last. You just made my day by saying last question. Yo, what's the lesson of 2023 so far from the last time we 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 had you on here? Or I'm sorry, that was November. So no, yeah. yeah. What's the lesson of 2023? And what's the audience need to hear? Don't sell yourself short. Number one, do not sell yourself short. Um, and secondly, as much for me as for anything like that, make certain you do the work. Always do the work. Um, work more. Speak only to support the work. 